Chapter 6 begins with a couple of sections on studying vectors. Uh, if you've taken physics before, uh, some of this might be a little bit of review. Uh, we're going to spend this first section um, going over some operations with vectors, um, both algebraic and we'll also show graphical operations with vectors. Um, and then we're going to uh, use vectors to solve some real world type application problems. First, let's define uh, what a vector is. A vector is, I could call it a directed line segment. Okay, all vectors have two things. They have both a magnitude and they have a direction. Uh, when we talk about magnitude, we're just talking about length. Okay, so all vectors have both a magnitude and a direction. And of course, when we're talking about direction, this is where we're going to be talking about angles, which is where it's going to fit into a trigonometry course. Now, vectors have plenty of uses. Uh, if you've, again, taken physics, you've no doubt studied them already and kind of seen some uses, but uh, we'll see vectors showing up in, in things like um, velocity type problems, force problems, um, there are others, um, but vectors can be used to represent quantities like these, velocities, force, etc. A little more vocabulary about a vector. A vector is going to look something like this. Okay, and for purpose of this one, let's just name the points here. We're going to have, let's just use P and Q. Uh, you always will have an initial point, and you'll have what we call a terminal point. And we, we represent, we, we name a vector this way. And just kind of like how you would write um, array in geometry. Uh, P and Q, initial and terminal point in order. Uh, the arrow on top, notice the arrow on the right side of this is ending where, or pointing towards the, the name of the point. Uh, at the terminal point. And when we talk about magnitude of a vector, let's talk about how we denote that. Magnitude of a vector, you're going to see it written like this. You're going to see these double absolute value bars uh, put around the vector. So anytime you see uh, that notation there, it's indicating that you're asked to, to find or deal with the magnitude of the vector. This first example, or rather basic example, says graph the vector with initial point P, terminal point Q, find the magnitude of the vector. So let's go ahead and, and sketch a graph. Okay, so we are starting at the point negative 3, 2. Negative 3, Two is going to be right there, so point P. And we're going to end at the point one five. It's point Q. There's my vector PQ. Okay, if we want to find the magnitude of this vector, there's a couple of ways to do it. Um, we could use just a straight distance formula. Or we could use, and this is the way I prefer to do it, so I'm going to show this way, we can use Pythagorean's Theorem. Uh, to use Pythagorean's Theorem, we need a triangle. Well, we can create a triangle out of this vector. Um, we've gone three here on this vertical edge between the two points. We've gone four units on this horizontal edge of this triangle. And I think right now we all know exactly where this is going. Uh, we all know the Pythagorean triple, three squared plus four squared 
is equal to c squared, this of course is 9, plus 16, 25 is c squared, so c is 5. That is the magnitude of that vector. So I would write it this way. I could say the magnitude of pq equals 5. Sometimes it's beneficial with dealing with vectors to deal with vectors that are in what we call component form. Component form of a vector is when the vector's initial point initial point is at the origin. Okay, so the initial point will be the coordinate point zero zero. Um, if the initial point is zero, 0, it's going to therefore make some of the um, operations, some of the computations that we, we work with in dealing with vectors just easier to deal with. Um, so, so how do we get a vector into this component form if it's not already given in component form? Um, well, if we let, we'll say a vector's initial point we'll call it P, be equal to P1, P2, and let's let its terminal point, we'll call it Q, be equal to Q1, Q2, and then the component form, so here comes kind of your formula, how to do it, the component form A vector PQ is this. Okay, we take Q1 minus P1, comma, Q2 minus P2. Uh, essentially, what we've done is just, you know. These are the x's, these are the y's of the points. We've basically just simply uh, subtracted the x's and subtracted the y's. Um, but notice that the order matters. The terminal point uh, q, q1 and q2, notice it's always terminal point minus initial point. Okay, So they have to be kind of set up like that. Terminal minus initial. Okay, each of the x's are set up that way. Now we rename the point this way. I'm going to rename it like this. I'm just going to call it, um, use letter V, V1, V2. Um, so what you're looking at, uh, when you see a vector written like this, and the the clear indication that this is in component form is that you've got the angled brackets. Okay, so this is not really a, an x, a single x, y point. Okay, um, like you would think of an x, y point, but the angled brackets indicate component form. What you're looking at is a vector whose initial point uh, is the point zero zero. and terminal point is V1, V2. Okay, so in other words, when we see this, it always tells us, um, and again, the brackets kind of indicate this, it always tells us start at the origin and then end at that XY point. And so this kind of thought of as an XY point is actually uh, kind of hiding two XY points. It's hiding the origin and then giving you where to stop, essentially is it. Now the magnitude of this vector um, the magnitude is simply that. Um, 
and we'll see kind of in some examples. This is simply just Pythagorean's theorem worked out. And if we start at the origin 0, 0 and end at this point, it'd just be like doing x squared plus y squared or, or a squared plus b squared equals c squared, hence the square root kind of on top of that. All right, directions here say find the component form of the vector and its magnitude. So we want the component form of PQ. Well, to find the component form, we need to take uh, terminal point minus initial point, and the terminal point is point Q. So I'm going to take 3 minus, and then the initial point's x, negative 2. And then for the y's, it'll be 4 minus 2. And so it's x minus x, comma, y minus y. And so this becomes 5, 2. Okay, so there's the component form for vector PQ. Now we want the magnitude of vector PQ. So for the magnitude, we're taking the square root of 5 squared plus 2 squared, square root of 25 plus 4, square root of 29. There's our magnitude. There's our magnitude, and here is our component form. Okay, let's do one more example. Uh, this time we're asked to find the component form and magnitude for vector QR. So let's see, QR. Uh, R is the terminal point, so we're going to start with R. Uh, so R is X minus Q's X. And then we'll go with the Y's. R's Y minus Q's Y. So the component form of QR is going to be negative 5, 1. Now we want to find the magnitude of QR. We're going to do the square root of negative 5 squared plus 1 squared. So this is 25 plus 1 more is 26. And I didn't do it on either of these two problems, but uh, if we resulted in square roots that could be simplified where we could take part out. We do want to go ahead and, and expect to see you do that. Next, let's look at some vector operations. How do you take uh, maybe two different vectors and, and how do you work with those vectors? So let's let vector u be u1, u2, and vector v be v1 and v2. So I'm just defining two vectors. Um, they're in component form. You notice the brackets. Um, and let's let k be a scalar. So k is just some constant. Uh, the following two formulas then will be true. We could combine vectors u and v with addition. And it's as simple as you might think. To, to add the two vectors, we're going to simply add their x's, and we're going to add their y's. And we can also find the scalar product uh, of a vector. So let's say k times u is equal to k times u1, u2, which is equal to ku1 and ku2. Very simply, the, the k, the scalar, is allowed to, to simply distribute uh, inside the vector.